So are you looking for the ultimate universal remote? Well, the Sofa Baton X1S claims to be just that. And we're going to find out. So let's get to it. Okay, so who else is tired of this? Trying to find the right remote for the TV, the soundbar, maybe your streaming box. Sometimes it's like an archaeological dig just so you can find the right remote to watch what you want to watch, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, it's like digging for gold trying to find the one you need. Because, you know, all these black little remotes, they all look the same, but they control different devices. And it's irritating. Well, that problem is going to end today because this is a Sofa Baton X1S Universal Remote. It promises to replace the entire mess with one sleek smart remote. And those are some big claims, right? Well, we are going to unbox it. We're going to set it up and we're going to give it a test. We're going to see if those claims are true. So a big shout out to Sofa Baton. They reached out to me about a week ago and asked if I wanted to review their new smart remote, the X1S. And of course, I was like, yeah, absolutely. Now, for those of you like myself who use the old Harmony system from Logitech, which they no longer sell or produce, that system was iffy. Half the time it worked, half the time it didn't. It caused more problems than it seemed like it fixed. So I just stopped using it. We're going to put this through its paces and we're going to see if it can be that ultimate remote control that replaces all of that mess. It's controllable by an app. You can set specific activities for like if you want to watch a particular device like Apple TV or if you want to watch your Google TV Chromecast like I have or you want to play a game and you want to attach it to your PS5 or your Xbox. And one cool thing for those of you who like to dabble in APIs and programming, they have awesome API integration where you can actually customize it with like the IFTTT, that's if this then that app. Uh, that app is pretty awesome because you can really granularly control what devices do, how they work, and this can pair right into it. And supposedly this gives you control over your entire entertainment system, which is what I'm looking forward to because I have a Google TV Chromecast and I have a PlayStation that I game on and I have two TVs over here. One TV is actually my streaming TV and the other TV is the TV that I actually game on. It's an OLED. And so it'd be nice to be able to come in, grab the remote, hit one button for gaming and it turn on my Philips Hue lights. It turns on both of the televisions, turns on the PlayStation, and that's it. Instead of now, I have to turn on each component one at a time. And don't forget, if you like this video, make sure you give that thumbs up. I would really sure appreciate it. And it sure does help the channel. Now, one of the cool things that I'm really looking forward to is you can set these activities, like I said. So it has a, a screen on it. It's not touch screen, but they do give you a nice little uh, roller wheel. And you can set the activities to do multiple functions. And that's what I'm really looking forward to. And also, you don't have to point the remote at any device because it wirelessly communicates with the hub. And I'm going to get to that when we get it unboxed. And so the hub then sends out the IR signal. It sends out Bluetooth, maybe wireless. It depends on how your device is connected to the hub, but it can control multiple devices. And the hub doesn't have to have exact line of sight to your television because it's a pretty powerful IR transmitter. And uh, they say it bounces off walls and different things to where you don't have to like have it right in front of the television. So we're going to see uh, how that actually functions because where I'm going to be putting it is not going to be right at the television. It's going to be back here on my desk. So let's get this unboxed and we're going to see what's inside. And then we are going to get it connected to my devices. We're going to download the app and get the app set up. All right. So I already took off the cellophane packaging. We don't need that on there. I can tell you that um, I really like these manufacturers nowadays not getting overcomplicated with their packaging. It makes it so much easier to deal with. So let's get this opened up and see what we got inside. They give you a nice detailed instruction booklet that not only gives you instruction, it also has a QR code you can scan and uh, go to a video tutorial. So that's kind of cool. And so here is the remote. And I can tell you just by holding it in my hand, this is a premium device. This feels great. It's got a nice weight to it and it fits well in the hand. It doesn't feel slippery like some remotes do. So that's pretty awesome. Now this does not have a replaceable battery, but it does have USB-C charging. Uh, and of course, you know, nowadays most phones are USB-C. So it should be really easy to get this thing charged up. 
And I'll be curious to see how long the battery lasts. I, I'm not going to have a high level of usage like some people might. So I would expect this to last quite a while. Uh, I believe they say in their documentation that it lasts up to 45 days. So um, that's not bad. And this is quality. I really, really like that. When they say basic settings, they mean basic settings. Basically, turn it on, add device, create activity. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see if it's that easy, right? Okay, so this is the hub, and this is actually what you're going to be using that communicates with the devices to make the activities function and turn you know, your components on, your TV, your stereo, soundbar, whatever the case may be. And again, this feels very high quality. It seems they've done a really good job in putting a lot of thought into this as far as keeping it small, inconspicuous, looking good. It's got rubber feet on the bottom, so it's not going to slide around on your desk or your table. One thing I really like is it has some slots there on the back. If you can see those right here. And this allows you to actually hang it on a wall or you could screw it to the side of a cabinet uh, if you want to get it out of the way. So that's pretty cool. There's not a lot of people that do that with these little devices. And it would be nice to, you know, keep them inconspicuous. I know, for example, my wife, she does not like having devices sit on top of the cabinet or dresser in the bedroom she doesn't want to see it and of course here are the ir blaster cables and they have these little sticky pads on them so you can like stick them to uh, your infrared area on your tv so for example let's say you want to put the hub inside a cabinet where it can't actually get the ir signal out then you can run this from the hub to your television and it'll actually send the signal. I won't need to be using these because the hub I'm gonna leave out. I don't really think I have any use for hiding it. It's not that big a deal up here in my office, but they do give you two of them. This one actually has two sensors on it, which is really nice. And of course on the hub, they have this um, connections in the back right there. And this is just a pairing button right here. That's USB-C power. And then of course the one, two for the IR blaster cables. And they give you two USB-C to USB-A cables. One's gonna be for powering the hub and the other one you can use to charge your remote. But if you need longer cables and you have one, you don't necessarily have to use these. I know I have some really high quality braided cables. One of them's like, I don't know, 10 feet long. Um, not that I need it for this, but if you did need a longer cable, you can use what you have, but it's nice that they give you one for each device so you don't have to switch them back and forth. Now they do give you one power adapter, so you can use this for the hub, but I would imagine that most everybody nowadays has multiple of these laying around from old phones, which would be more than enough to charge the remote. So you can use this cable or whatever cable you have, plus whatever other charger you have, and you can use that to charge the device. You have the central hub, you have the remote, you have both IR blaster cables, power adapter, and two USB-C to USB-A cables. One's to power this, one's to charge your remote. Okay, so just a little follow-up. I actually started this video last weekend, but I ended up having a camera issue that corrupted some footage. So I'm actually finishing this review this weekend, so that's why things might be a little different. And in addition to that, I actually had a question for Sofa Baton support. And let me tell you, their support was awesome. They answered my question really quickly. They gave me the correct answer and it solved the problem I was having. The problem wasn't because of the you know, Sofa Baton remote. It was because the TV that I have is so new, the specific model wasn't in their database. And when I say specific model, because you know, you have the S90D, but then Samsung classifies by size. So you'll have like 55 S90D, 77 S90D. And they explained that, yes, it's there. It's just under a different size. However, all of the button functions work exactly the same and they do. So uh, that's awesome. So I've actually got the app installed. The hub is set up, the remote automatically pairs itself. I didn't have to do anything to pair it. I just turned it on and it's already connected, but there's no devices and there's no activities. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna get in my phone so you can see what's going on and how I'm configuring the app. And then I'll show you the remote 
And then what I'm going to be doing then is switching over and showing you another camera view that actually has both TVs where you can see the activity. Because what I want to be able to do is hit one button, turn on both TVs, switch inputs, and then make sure that it turns on the PlayStation. Now the PlayStation will come on via CEC, which is a process in which when you turn one device on through HDMI, it will automatically power another device that's connected. So, and that works perfectly fine on that television. So I'm gonna leave that alone. So that way, when I turn on and off the TV, it'll turn on and off the PlayStation. And then I'll obviously want this TV on. Then I'm also gonna take this TV just by itself and I'm gonna set up an activity to watch my Nvidia Shield Pro, which you see sitting right there on the desk. And that will be another activity. So those are the two things I typically do up here in this room. And so that's multiple devices that I'm gonna configure in the remote and have them, you know, have different functions. Okay, so as you can see, the app's open. Here, I'll show you on here as well. And there's no devices and there's no activities. It's blank. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add some devices. But I wanted to show you how the hub is configured first and show you some features that are part of the system. So if you go into me, you'll see where it has the ability of you using the API interface. You can actually do a share code base because if there's something that you have that needs to be like public to everyone else, you can actually share that to their network, which is awesome. And then you can actually come into the hub and you can see that it gives you some additional features from the hub. Now, one thing that's really cool is find my remote. If you've lost your remote in a couch cushion somewhere, <laughs> that happens a lot. All you gotta do is hit this button and there's the remote. Let's turn this off. There we go. And that's it. I also meant to show you too, see the remote says no devices because this is directly synced with the app. So as soon as I add devices in the app, it'll sync it to the remote. And it's nice that they give you the ability of manually syncing. Uh, so that way you can make sure that any changes you've made are definitely getting pushed to the remote. And of course you come into firmware. Uh, I did actually have a firmware update today when I opened it, but all you gotta do is click update and it connects. Oh, look, there's another one. Okay, we're gonna let this uh, firmware update finish. You wanna make sure to always update firmware because that's a really, really important aspect of your components. And if the firmware is not up to date, you're not gonna get any security fixes, you're not gonna get any bug fixes, and you're not gonna get any kind of updates sometimes where they'll add devices and things like that. So uh, this is the second time it's done it today, but that's fine. You wanna come in here and you wanna check that pretty regular anyways. Okay, now that that's done, there's just one other thing I wanna show you real quick, and they give you the ability to switch to another sofa baton device, which is kinda of cool. So you can kinda of go back and forth if you have multiple. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our first device. And all you gotta do is hit this little plus sign. Since most of the TVs are IR, that's what you're gonna to wanna to use when you connect your televisions. Uh, there's other devices you can connect via Bluetooth and via Wi-Fi, as you can see there, like Sonos, Roku, Philips Hue. Those you can only connect via wireless. So just click infrared, and here we're gonna search for model. Here's where I was telling you about the um, S90D issues that I had and I just need to select a different model. So what you're gonna do is you come up here, and so I'm gonna to to say Samsung, and there's Samsung. And as you can see, I mean, the list for Samsung devices is huge. So it's much easier if you can just tap in here and then you can start typing uh, part of your TV's model number and it'll give you a list. So I'm just gonna put in here S90D. So that's all I have in there, right? So you can see here where it says QN77S90D. That is the device that I need to use. Mine is actually a QN55S90D, but that's not listed in here, but that's okay because this right here will work fine. And you see where it says user shared? That means that somebody else has actually added this to the database, which is really cool that you can do that. So we're gonna select that there. These are the options here like it shows you what's already like a base programming, right? So you could actually change what that button does, but I'm gonna leave all these default. And so I'm just gonna hit next. And here I'm gonna put S90D, cause I wanna know 
TV icon is fine, complete. So now it's downloading that information. It's going to actually push it to the remote. So you see right now, it still says no devices and that is syncing. So once that synchronization is done, this will show the S90D in it. Okay, complete, awesome. And there you have it. And see right now it says syncing. So once that gets done synchronizing, then that device will be in there. But I'm gonna go ahead and continue what I need to continue in the app and that'll just continue to sync in the background. So that TV model is a UN65TU6, oh, there it is, 690T. So let's click on that. And again, those are the default things that are already configured. And so we're just gonna leave that like it is. And this right here, I'm gonna put 65 inch. I'm not gonna put that whole model complete. Again, this is downloading from the library, pushing to the remote. All right, so that's complete, quick and easy. So the next thing I'm gonna add is I'm gonna go ahead and add my NVIDIA Shield Pro. So that way, when I get ready to do all the activity programming, it's already going to be there. It is also an IR device, so that's where you'll wanna go. So you're gonna click plus sign, infrared, search model, and I'm gonna start typing NVIDIA. There's that, and there you go. Now, Shield TV Pro user shared again. I love that capability where if you have something, you can actually share it to the network. So we're going to click on that. And again, these things I'm going to leave the same because the activity is where you're actually going to set what button does what. So let's click next and I'm just going to put shield and icons fine, complete. All right, that was fast. Okay, so we have the S90D, we have the 65 inch, and we have my NVIDIA Shield Pro. Now, I don't need to add the PlayStation because the TV will actually turn the PlayStation on and off because I leave it in rest mode, so that way it will turn on and off with the television. So let's go ahead and start getting the activity programmed. So just click on the activities there at the bottom. I almost forgot, one other thing you need to do before you go do an activity is you have to kind of pre-configure some information for how the devices work. So you click on not configured, it's gonna connect to the device and you're gonna click power settings. And this is kind of just telling, you know, Sofa Baton, here's how I want you to operate this TV. And so when it's not in use, I want it off. Uh, I only have one power key, yes, correct. And complete all right that's done that's syncing to the app and the remote now the next thing you want to do is do source configuration and because i have an xbox hooked up to that i do want to make sure that when it comes on that it's going to go to the correct input so i'm going to say i need to switch inputs and it's going to ask these you know options direct input will be fine because the tv will automatically put it where it needs to go so you click that. So here's all the different inputs that are available on my television. So I don't need any of these except for one and two. Two is the Xbox. I'm not gonna do any programming with it right now because uh, I mainly play on the PlayStation anyways. So again, these are some things here that are already preset on the device. So I'm just gonna leave those alone and click confirm. And I do know that my HDMI 1 is my PS5 and HDMI 2 is my Xbox. Okay, so now this device is set up. So we're gonna click back and we gotta do the same thing to this TV. Okay, so now that all three of the devices are configured, now we can go to the activities and actually set an activity. So we're gonna click the plus sign and the first thing I wanna do is we're gonna program the PS5 activity first so I want the TAT TV, I want that TV next. So the S90, uh, I wanna make sure it's on PS5. The Samsung 65 inch, I wanna make sure it's on PC next. Uh, so current power state for both televisions is off. So yes, next. So now this is asking you these particular buttons for volume up and down and for the mute. Now. I use headset, which I'm gonna link that in the description. Matter of fact, all of this is gonna be linked in the description. So uh, if you wanted to check out any of this, just click the links, they are affiliate links. So if you do end up purchasing, I appreciate it, it helps support the channel. Um, so I'm gonna leave that though on the television because I don't really need to control it anyways, because again, it's controlled through my headphones. So that's fine. 
And likewise for this, I don't really have any control on the PlayStation, so we're gonna leave that with S90D. It's nice that it gives you the option of choosing which television you want these buttons to work with. Uh, so right now we're gonna leave it on the S90D. And so this right here, play PS5. And I'm gonna change this icon, and I'm gonna change it to gaming and complete. Okay, one activity. So now let's just go ahead and add the other. So we're gonna hit the plus sign, and this one's gonna be NVIDIA Shield Pro. And I know it says watch NVIDIA Shield Pro. So if you click that, it automatically selects what it thinks it should use. But see, it selects incorrect because I don't want the Samsung S9DD. So I'm actually going to, let's click back and then add it again. I'm not gonna click anything. I wanna custom configure it myself. Okay, so now I have my two primary activities, one for my Play PS5, the other for uh, watch the NVIDIA Shield Pro and so we're going to test these out and see how they work. So I'm going to go ahead and actually switch over and to another camera where you can watch the televisions to see how they come on and off and how that functions and uh, then we're going to come back. So but actually what I need to do first is I need to wait for this to get done syncing. See it's at 60 percent. So as soon as that's done then I'll be able to show you how the remote looks and I can use the remote to activate the activities, but I can also use the app. So it looks the same. And that's what I really love about this. Let's say you've lost your remote. Let's say you didn't know where this was in the house, even though yes, you can click the button and go find it. But if you didn't want to hassle going to find it, you could just come into your app, click on your activity and boom, you're watching whatever it is you want to watch, listening to whatever it is you want to listen to, which I think is awesome. That's a great feature to have to be able to control all of that like that. OK, so now you see we have S90D, we have Samsung 65 inch and NVIDIA Shield Pro. So you can click this little back arrow right here and go back to this main screen. And so I'm going to use this roller wheel right here which works really, really, really well. I mean, it actually has a really nice tactile feel to it and it's rubber, so it's really easy to use. So I wanna come up to activities, as you can see there, and then I'm gonna click into activities and you can actually, you actually click on the actual rollerball to go into the activities. So you can see there, it looks just like the app, right? So I wanna play PS5. So let's go ahead and switch over to this other camera. Okay, so now you can see both TVs in this uh, picture and you can see the PlayStation down there. You can see my Nvidia Shield right there. Okay, so we're going to hit uh, play PS5 on the remote and it should turn on both televisions and set input levels to PC on this one and PS5 on the other one. Okay, nice. So now as you see that is the screen from my computer and the other TV over there you see is the PS5 computer. Now, I have this issue sometimes, regardless of what I actually use. Sometimes it doesn't switch the input correctly and I have to actually manually do it. This has nothing to do with the sofa baton though. That's the television. I've had that issue with that TV in the past. So um, I usually have to come over here and then go over and choose like if I want to play the PlayStation and then it'll come on. So, but that's again, that has nothing to do with the sofa baton. That strictly has to do with the television itself. The main thing I wanted TVs to turn on because it automatically will hit the PS5. So let's go ahead and you can hit the off button right here. All right. And both TVs are off. So now on the S90D, when that turns off, it automatically puts the PlayStation into a rest mode. So I don't have to worry about turning it on and off. It does it all by itself. Okay, so now we're going to click on watch NVIDIA Shield and it should just turn that TV on and then the uh, NVIDIA Shield box should turn on. And it's gonna obviously put it on the correct HDMI port. Oh, there you go. Awesome. Then from there, you can see how it's highlighted green. That tells you that both devices are on. So then all you have to do is hit that power off button right there. And then it shuts both devices off. And as you can see, it's not green anymore. So that makes it really nice and easy to know what's on, what's not, and be able to control it. Uh, obviously, all of these buttons here 
will function the nvidia shield you know home up down if you want to watch tv volume so basically this one remote will replace all the remotes for those which is awesome so again big shout out to sofa baton for sending me this remote uh this is a really awesome device and I've, it's high quality feels great works great and look christmas is a month away this would be an awesome gift for a friend family maybe even for yourself <laughs> so look the link in the description has a 15 percent off uh coupon so make sure you click that link and go grab you one because this is an awesome device and if you want to find out more about that s90d over there because that's an awesome television make sure you watch that video thanks for watching